In this problem, we are given a position function of some particle or object, that is the square root of t squared plus 1, and we are asked to find its velocity function, its acceleration function, and the net force acting on the object. We will recall that the total force acting on an object is just m times a, or mass times acceleration, which in this case is 5a, which doesn't tell us a whole lot at this point because we don't know the acceleration, but we'll keep this in mind for later when we're trying to determine the net force at the end of the problem. So first we need to find the velocity function. In order to do that, we need to take the limit as h goes to 0 of p of t plus h minus p of t all over h. So let's just plug in t plus h and t into our position function. And we get t plus h squared plus 1 minus the same position function, just t squared plus 1 square rooted, all this over h. So the way that we need to open up these square roots in order to be able to manipulate this in any way. And in order to avoid writing the same thing over and over again, we're just going to call q the conjugate pair of this. Which if you haven't seen before, it looks like this. Instead of a minus sign between the two, we're going to use a plus sign. we're going to go ahead and multiply both the top and bottom by this mysterious q. Just the way I, this way I don't have to keep writing this in the denominator over and over again. So when we multiply these two together, we get t plus h squared plus 1 minus this plus this, they will cancel each other out. And so what we'll get is just these two multiplied together, which is going to be t squared plus 1. All of this over h times q, of course. All right, so now let's just open up these parentheses or, or uh, open up the square and see what we get. t squared plus 2th plus h squared plus 1 minus t squared minus 1 all over h times q. We're taking the limit as h goes to 0 of that. Okay, let's see what we can cancel out here. We have t squared and a minus t squared, those go away. We have plus 1 and a minus 1, so those go away. So what we're left with is the limit of h goes to 0 of 2th plus h squared over h times q. All right, well, we can cancel out h's here, h, h, h squared. So what we're left with is the limit as h goes to 0 of 2t plus h over q. So now we're finally going to plug in our q and see what we get. We have t plus h squared plus 1, square root of that plus square root of t squared plus 1, and we have 2t plus h on top. But of course, we are taking the limit as h goes to 0. But at this point, we can just plug in 0 for h, since there are no problem points anymore. So on top, we just get 2t. Plug in 0 here, we get the square root of t squared plus 1, and this is square root of t squared plus 1. 
which we can combine to make 2 times square root of t squared plus 1 the denominator, and then these 2's cancel. And this is our velocity function. Hooray. So now we need to apply this whole process again to our velocity function to get our acceleration. So let's go ahead and get started. It's not going to be pretty, but it must be done. Again, taking the limit as h goes to 0 of v of t plus h minus v of t all over h. So now we need to plug in t plus h and t into our velocity function and see what we get. We get t plus h over square root t plus h squared plus 1 minus t over the square root of t squared plus 1. All of this over h. Now this is certainly not pretty, but it is not completely unmanageable. We can work with this. And we're going to pull a similar trick to what we did before. We're going to take the letter k and use oh, right over here to save some space. Like the letter k, and we'll have both of these denominators multiplied by each other. And we'll see how that helps us in a second t plus h squared plus 1 times t squared plus 1. So let's multiply the top and bottom by this mysterious k. And we'll see that the, uh, this denominator gets canceled and we're left with t plus h times the other part of k, which is square root of t squared plus 1. Now this denominator cancels with this and we're left with t times square root of t plus h squared plus 1. And all this is over h times k. And we're taking the limit as h goes to 0. Okay is still not that easy to work with, so we're going to make another definition here. Let's pick another fun letter. Why don't we use x? Not a variable. This time it means something else. And what are we going to do this time? Well, here we're going to use the conjugate again. This term and this term with a plus in between them. So that we get some nice and tasty cancellations. Okay. So we don't need to have parentheses there. And then plus t times the square root of t plus h squared plus 1. Just enough room. Okay. So let's multiply this on the top and bottom by x. And what do we get? Again, the limit as h goes to 0. And how does this help us here? Well, multiply these two together, and we get t plus h squared. And finally, we get to break the t squared plus 1 out of the square root. And we just get t squared plus 1. And then multiply these two together. We get t squared, and then we finally get to break that out of the square root. t plus h squared plus 1 all over h. And once again, we'll notice that since this is the conjugate, when we multiply this by this, we get some nasty looking quantity that's negative. And when we multiply this by this, we get some similar nasty looking quantity that's positive. So those will just cancel each other out. That's the value of taking the conjugate. 
And we're multiplying all this, of course, on the bottom by h, k, x. Now finally, we can break some of this stuff open and see what we're actually working with. We are quickly approaching the point where we can use some normal, simple algebra to find our answer. So first let's open up this square. We get t squared plus 2th plus h squared times t squared plus 1 minus t squared. And we're going to break open this parentheses, which is the same thing as what we wrote just here. Don't need that print. t squared plus 2th plus h squared. Oops. h squared plus 1 at the end there. All over h times k times x. All right. So now we just multiply these out, distribute the t squared, see what we get. Okay, so we'll just take this term by term. t squared times t squared is t to the fourth. t squared times 1 is t squared. 2th times t squared is going to be 2 t cubed h, 2th times 1 is just 2th, h squared t squared, and finally h squared. Now we need to distribute the t squared. We get t to the fourth, and this is all negative because we have this minus sign out in front. Minus 2t cubed h minus t squared h squared minus t squared. This massive expression over hkx. Okay, this is not pretty, but luckily a lot of things will cancel for us. We see we have t to the fourth minus t to the fourth that goes to zero. We have t squared, t squared, let's get rid of those. We have a minus 2t cubed h and plus 2t cubed h, get rid of those. We have a minus, two, uh, minus t squared h squared, which is the same as h squared t squared, get rid of that. But really, the only terms that we have left are this guy and this guy. Well, this is the limit as h goes to 0 of 2th plus h squared over h times k times x. Finally, we are at a point when we can just cancel out these h's. So let's go ahead and do that here. h on the bottom cancels with the h's on the top. So this is what we're taking the limit of to find the acceleration function if you've forgotten what we were trying to find, which I already have. So now we can finally plug k and x back into this and see what we get. All right, so on the top we have 2t plus h. On the bottom we have k, which is t plus h squared plus 1 inside a radical times t squared plus 1 inside a radical. That's our k, and now we need to plug in our x. Open up a bracket here. So we have t plus h times t squared plus 1 a little bit farther here, plus t times the square root of t plus h squared plus 1. 
So now you may be thinking, well, now we're just stuck in the same boat. We have these crazy radicals that we have no way to deal with. But the key here is that now we can simply plug in 0 for h, because we don't have any problems in the denominator. And we'll see that a lot of this cancels very nicely. So on the top, we have just 2t. On the bottom, we'll plug in 0 for h here. We get the square root of t squared plus 1 times the square root of t squared plus 1. We can already see that this is going to cancel out pretty nicely. And then inside our bracket, we have t plus h. Well, that's just t times square root of t squared plus 1. And then plus a t times the square root of, well, we plug in 0 for h here. We get another t squared plus 1. Well, alrighty. We see that these two multiply together to just become t squared plus 1. And then we have two of these, so 2t times the square root of t squared plus 1. Well, from here, we can see that the two t's cancel. And then what we're left with as our acceleration function. The moment has finally arrived. We can unveil a of t simply equal to 1 over t squared plus 1 to the 3 halves power. You see we have this is t squared plus 1 raised to the half. This is t squared plus 1 raised to the 1. Multiply those together. There's our acceleration function. So, the very last part of the problem is that we need to find the net force acting on the object, which we recall from earlier is just m times a, or mass times acceleration. Our mass is 5, so the force acting on the object is simply 5 over t squared plus 1 to the 3 halves power. So all that work boils down to just this simple answer. And that's our final answer.